So we have our animation set up within our animation window. Now we need to start adding the code that drives our animation and basically controls our player character. So before we get set up, let's set up our Unity environment so it matches mine. So we're going to need to get access to the animation window. So I'm going to get animation window and I'm going to dock it right on my game tab like so. And the important one here is our animator window. And I'm going to dock this on my console down here. And I'm going to adjust the size of everything because I need to be able to say a pretty big area within my animator window right here. If I select Gambit, <clears throat> you can see my animator window is uh, populated with the uh, animation states we set up in the last chapter. So what we need to do now is we need to make a script. And we're going to go to our scripts folder. Right click in this empty space, go to create. Of course, we're going to be in C sharp. We're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this Gambit controller script. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this onto my Gambit sprite here that we set up in our last chapter. <clears throat> and now we have our Gambit controller script right here. And I'm going to minimize some of these guys right here for right now. And I just want to be able to see my Gambit controller script and maybe my transform positions. All right, so let's go ahead and right click on our Gambit controller script, open up Mono Develop, and here we have a blank palette. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see a little bit easier. All right, that might help help you guys out. So I'm going to format it just like I like it, <clears throat> and. Why don't we tackle movement in this uh, video? All right, so I'm just gonna go step by step. This is just gonna be a simple follow along video and you guys can follow along, get a feel for how we can uh, use the animator window and set up different kinds of states so we can get our characters animations being driven by our movement here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start out with are declaring some public variables. So I'm gonna go public float. And I'm going to create a variable for my walk movement speed and public float. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and make one for attack movement speed. We want to be able to control how fast our character moves when he's attacking or when he is walking. <clears throat> because you don't want to be uh, sprinting while attacking. That's not the way we're going to set up our gameplay. All right. Next, uh, why don't we set up some uh, values for our a math clamp so our character doesn't walk off screen. So I'm going to do public float x min x max z min and z max. Right, like so. Great. Now I'm going to create some private variables. Private float movement speed in general. This is what's going to drive our actual movement speed. <clears throat> and why don't we set up a private rigid body variable and call it rigid body. Notice the naming conventions. <clears throat> we access our rigid body component and we give it the name lowercase r, uppercase b for our rigid body. This is so we can access our physics on our rigid body to get our character moving. All right, so in start, we need to go ahead and assign our rigid body a value. And we're going to do that by going rigid body equals, and we're going to use our age old get component, do the <clears throat> little bracket, and we're going to access our rigid body component. And now we have rigid body assigned to get the component of rigid body so we can access all the functions of our rigid body component in our inspector over here. All right, great. And why don't we go ahead and set our movement speed equal to walk. Oops, walk movement speed. All right, great. So now we need to actually set up the code to drive our characters walking. I'm going to get rid of these comment brackets for right now. We know what these functions do. And instead of working in update, I'm going to work in void fixed update. Remember, the difference between update and fixed update is update is ran every single frame. 
So if your game rate, if your game has a frame rate that varies in time, so it goes from 30 frames a second to 40 frames a second, down to 42 frames per second constantly, that's going to mess up with some physics calculations because physics calculations need a steady time to base their calculations on. And that's what fixed update does for us. It gives us a steady stream of time not affected by our frame rate. So we're going to put all of our movement functions in fixed update. And this is going to be the same way we've always moved our characters in previous uh, lessons and previous <coughs> in the previous space shooter. So I'm just going to go ahead and type through this. And this should be a review. So we're going to have a move horizontal variable. And it's going to be tied to our input dot get axis on the horizontal plane. All right. And what I'm going to do to save time, I'm just going to copy that line, come down here and change a few keywords. Move vertical. But in this case, it'll kind of be more like in and out of the screen. But for all intents and purposes, let's just call it vertical. <clears throat> so basically, we've tied these two variables, move horizontal and move vertical, to when the player presses our WASD keys on our keyboard. Nothing new there. So let's create a new vector three variable, and let's call it movement. And we're going to set it to new vector three. <clears throat> and we're going to move in the horizontal. We're not going to move at all in the Y axis. And in our Z axis, we're going to go move vertical. That might be a little confusing for naming conventions. Um, I guess you could call this uh, move depth, get axis, and do the vertical there. <clears throat> because this quotation ties our input to A and D on the keyboard. And this quotation vertical here assigns our get input from our W and S keys. So... It's a little weird naming convention, so I'm just going to keep it just like this as if we were f flying our, our spaceship. Now we actually need to <clears throat> access our rigid body component so we can start driving our game object of Gambit. So why don't we just do rigid body. Let's see, we've already got our rigid body component here. So why don't we say rigid body dot velocity equals movement times movement speed all right this is what's going to actually move our character our velocity rigid body velocity value right there <clears throat> now we just need to update our rigid body position dot position and that's going to equal new vector three not vector two. And now we want to use our math clamp uh, uh, method of programming in which we can confine our character to move in a certain. I'm just going to indent like so, so we can know that this belongs to our new vector three. And now we need to give our vector three, three new, uh, three values for X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to do it like so. Math, and remember, we're using parentheses here. Math.clamp equals, or not equals, but what, what, what do we want to clamp? We want to clamp our rigid body. Nope. <coughs> Got it. Ah, the auto formatting is messing with me. If the auto formatting messes with you, press escape and you can get rid of it. And now we can keep our... <laughs> It's really, uh, auto formatting is really messing with us right now, isn't it? But escape gets rid of that little uh, autocomplete form up top. So we want to clamp our rigid body position in the X axis by X min and X max. And then our next value will be, we're going to access whatever transform position Y we are in right now. Because we don't want to, <clears throat> we don't want to set our Y axis to zero because it'll move our gambit sprite right into the middle of the grid here. What we want to do is we just want to keep it at the same position it's always been. So we'll just access our transform dot position dot y comma. And here we go with our math clamp 
for our Z axis, rigid body. It's going to mess with my auto formatting, so I press escape to get rid of it. And then I get access position dot Z. I'm going to go Z min. We're going to clamp it by our Z minimum and our Z maximum. And then close that parentheses and put our semicolon. <clears throat> and just tab it over to where it all lines up like so. All right. <clears throat> Great. Now we've updated our movement. And now we should be able to move our Gambit sprite. So I'm going to press Control S to save this. We go to File and Save As. <coughs> Let's minimize this. Let's check our console. Nothing going on there. Hmm. <coughs> What's going on? We can't. I can't move my character. Well, we forgot to assign values to my uh, <coughs> movement scripts over here. So I want to give myself a walking speed of one. And now we need to set my math clamp values here. So we simply just do that. I want to adjust my camera a little bit. I want to bring my camera in just a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe pull it up just a little bit. Now we just need to, uh, in our scene view and with our game view open, I just need to see how far we can move Gambit before he goes off the screen. So we got a negative 4.1 value on the X. So I'll do negative 4.1. And looks like that's as far as he can go in the positive x direction, which is 4.6. All right. <coughs> Reset that value to zero. And then for z axis, closer to the camera, we have a positive of, let's see. All right. We have a negative value of negative 2.38. Let's say negative point. Two four, keep it rounded up just a little bit, and then we can kind of—I <clears throat> mean, we can have him go into far into the background. But why don't we just do a negative? Why don't we just do the positive value of two point four? So now I'm going to reset his transform positions, and notice we're leaving Y at point nine one one. <clears throat> we want to have Gambit directly on the ground here. So when I press play. All right. And I seem to still be not be able to move my character at all. So something's got to be going wrong. Let's see. Everything looks good. Oh, look at this. A spelling mistake. Fix up a date. I'm going to correct that right there. Now we actually are able to run fixed update. And now we're able to move my character like so all right great so now we got our character moving we need to add a few more touches to the walk first of all when our when our character moves to the left he's not uh he's not changing direction and most beat em ups when you walk to the left the character doesn't back up he turns around and faces the other direction so we need to create a function that flips our gambit game object whenever we walk to the left and then flips it back to the right if we turn around and walk to the right so how do we set that up well we need to have a conditional check right underneath our movement scripts that does that for us so why don't we just go ahead and set that up real quickly let me get to my notes all right so let's come down under our rigid body position uh, check right here, where we set our new rigid body position. And let's create a new conditional statement. Let's see. Well, I'm going to need to have some variables that check in which direction I'm facing. So actually, why don't we come up here and make some new variables while we're at it. So let's create a new private variable. And let's call this, uh, let's make a bool facing right. And that'll be our flag that checks whether our game object is facing right or left. And now we can come down here and make our conditional check. And we need to check for two things here. We need to check for the direction our character is moving and which direction our character is facing. So how do we do that? Let's write it out. So if 
our character is, let's see, well, how do we, which way, how can we check in which way our character is moving? Well, we have this variable up here, move horizontal, that is checking whether or not we're moving in the horizontal axis or the vertical axis. So if move horizontal is less than zero, meaning if we're moving to the left, if we're moving in a negative value, and we need to do another check, so we do a double ampersand, and, and if facing right is not true, that's what the exclamation mark means, then what can we do? Well, we need to flip the character at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called flip. So I'm going to go ahead and write flip right there. And why don't we come down outside of our void fix update and let's make a new function here. All right. So I'm going to move down to make sure you're uh, in the right indention mark. You don't want to write it in here. You want to write it right above that last one because we're making a brand new function here. So let's call this void flip. Let's give ourselves some curly brackets and let's get down and dirty with this code real quickly. All right. So when we call this flip function, we want to flip our Boolean facing right. So the exclamation mark will uh, basically flip whatever value this is. So if facing right is true, exclamation mark facing right will set it to false now we need to be able to create a uh, a vector three placeholder variable and set it equal to the current game object scale values so that's all that's a mouthful but just bear with me so we're gonna create a new vector three and we're gonna call it this scale we're creating a new variable where we can hold the uh the scale values and our transform component up here so we can do uh, so we can change it up and flip its value, and we're going to set this scale equal to transform dot local scale. So now we have a vector three that holds the three values for scale right here. Now we can get at these three x y z scale values. So now that we can get at those three values with our vector three this scale variable, let's go this scale, not this, this scale. In the x position, and we're going to multiply this, multiply equals negative 1. And basically, when you multiply something by negative 1, you basically just make it either negative or positive. So if you multiply 1 by negative 1, it's now negative. If you multiply negative 1, a negative value by negative 1, it becomes positive. So now that we've adjusted our placeholder, this scale value right here, we need to take this scale and load it back into our transform tab up in the top right. And this will effectively flip our whole game object. So we're going to do transform dot local scale equals this scale. All right. So basically we needed to uh, adjust our Boolean facing right flag and we needed to do our math. We needed to create a placeholder value for our transform values. We need to do the math for it to uh, flip our X scale. And then we need to update our scale with our, you know, local value, this scale. So every time we are moving in the negative direction and we're not facing right. So then we're going to do a flip. And we also need to add one more conditional check right here. So that if we're moving left, we now flip to the right when we're moving right. So we're going to do an else if here. Else if move. And we're just going to do the exact opposite. It's greater than zero. And, and facing right is now true. So no exclamation mark there. We're going to call flip again. And that function here will just handle, and these conditional checks will handle our flipping motion. So let's see what we got now. So we're walking to the left. All right. So I must have, there's something wrong here. Now I'm not, I'm not facing in the right direction here. So what are we going to do? What, what should we do here? 
Well, we got to figure out what part of our code is messing up right now. Hmm. Well, let's see. There's a few ways we might be able to do this. Let's try some. I think the biggest mistake we've made is if we look at our Gambit character controller, we don't have a facing right. So why don't we make bool facing right equals true. Let's see. Right now, when we just set our private variable bool facing right, we don't set it to any value. So when, a, when you just declare a Boolean and don't set its value, it always defaults to false or defaults to false. So why don't we go up here and just go ahead and give it a value of true. So when we start out, our facing right is going to be true. And so we can see this work for us. Why don't we make this facing right variable public for now? So now when I see my gambit, nope, let me clear up that mistake. So if you double click the uh, compiling error, it'll go straight to what you're looking for. I have two semicolons there. So now my gambit is facing right is not true. So a check mark means true. No check mark means false. And my character gambit defaults by facing right. So when we press play, I should update. And it's not. So what do we do here? Facing right equals true. Let's see. Well, why don't we go here and set the value in void start. Facing right equals true. So let's go ahead and set that declare value. I'm going to go ahead and declare this value and start. And press control S to save. Now facing right is true. And now my flip is working. Notice how facing right, the boolean is flagging on and off. So now facing right is true. Now our flip function is really making sure our character is facing in the right direction. And you'll notice that whenever we move up and down, our character just stays looking in the position he was. So I can move up and down this way. This is a staple of beat-em-up mechanics. You know, you don't change your position when you're moving up and down in the level. You only flip your position. You only flip your uh, perspective when you're moving left and right. So now we got to do one more thing to set up our movement, and that is we got to tie our walking animation to this code. So this is going to be something new for us. We're actually going to have to start working in our animator window. We're going to start setting up parameters and create and start working in our node-based environment. A node-based work environment is one in which you have various nodes, such as this little walk node. And you create connections between our various nodes that drive our actions. So I'm going to pick up walk right here. I'm going to set it right above my idle animation here. So I need to create a transition between idle and walk right now. We do that by right clicking on my idle, make transition, and then I'm going to click walk. So now we have a connection between idle and walk. Next, I need to go to my parameters tab, tab in the animator window. And I need to make a new parameter that I can access in my code. So I'm going to press plus, and we're going to make a float, and we're going to call this speed. All right, basically, we're going to switch between the idle animation and the walk animation based on how fast our character is moving. So if our character has zero velocity, then he's going to be idling. If he has anything above zero velocity, the idle is going to make the transition into walk and we'll be walking. All right, so why don't we go ahead and set that up in code and how we can do that. All right, so let's move to our code real quickly. And under our flip conditional checks, we're going to write one line of code that is going to set our animation states. Okay, so we need to do one thing. We need to have access to our animator component on Gambit. We need to get access to this right here. So this is our animator window. This animator window ties directly to this component in our inspector. So we need to be able to access that in our code. So why don't we go animator and give it a tour. There we go. So now we have a variable that we can access our animator code in, 
And we need to, we've initialized this variable. Now we need to clear it and give it a value. So let's say animator equals get component animator. Now we have a variable we can access in our code to get to our animator window here. So I'm going to move back down here and I'm going to say animator dot set float. This is going to let me set our speed float here. Set float. Speed, which is our actual float we want to access here. And what do we want to set our speed to? Well, this is uh, going to, you just got to follow along with me. And after I code it, I'll explain the relationships between the code and the animator and what's going on here. So in our speed, we want to set up, we want to do rigid body dot velocity dot square magnitude. All right. This right here is going to set our speed parameter in our animator window to a square magnitude of our velocity value or how fast we're moving. So we'll be able to set our speed variable and our parameters in our animator window to however fast our velocity is going. And square magnitude takes our velocity, which is a vector three, and figures out and converts it into a float number. So without the square magnitude, we'd be, we'd be trying to set a float speed parameter in our animator window to a vector three value and Unity will not like that. So square magnitude converts our velocity into a float number, into a float value. All right, so why is that important? Well, here we go. If I click on my transition arrow in my animator window, I see a few things here. I have a blending fade in, fade out timeline here, and I see a conditions here. What we're gonna wanna do is, we're gonna want to give this condition of speed and we need to set the relationships between our transitions here. So if our speed going into walk, if we're in idle and our speed, which we're setting right here, is greater than one. So if our velocity, square magnitude of our velocity is greater than one when we're moving, then we want to be able to transition into our walk cycle animation. So we're going to go speed is greater than 0.01. Then we're going to transition into our walk node here. All right. So why don't we go ahead and test that out real quick? All right. So you can see here, idle is just looping. All right. And our speed is set to zero. And our transition is set up for when speed is greater than 0 0.01, we're going to transition into walk. Okay. Nothing's working. What do we got to do to fix this? All right, let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to make sure I've saved this code for one. So I press Control S and I hit play. All right, so if I move my character, I should see my speed float value. There we go. Okay, now we got some now we got some animation going on here, but it, it doesn't look good. What's going on here? First of all, we're just stuck in walk, and if I press play again. Keep your eye on our bars here. So as soon as I start moving, there's a little bit of delay here. I'm going to press play again. Now watch Gambit. If I start moving, now he doesn't start walking until right there. We need to do two things to fix this behavior. First, or we actually need to do three things. <laughs> First, we need to make a transition from walk back to idle, meaning whenever we're done walking, we want to go back to idle. So we'll do the same thing here. Like I said, right click, make transition back. And then we're going to click on my transition back to idle. We're going to give this a new condition. And this time we're going to do less than 0.01. All right, so let's see what happens now. So I'm walking, I'm walking. And if I stop walking, okay, I'm transitioning back into idle. So I'm able to set up my walk in idle, but if the animation is just not syncing up with the movement of my character. All right, now we need to adjust our timelines and our transitions here. 
So as soon as I idle, as soon as I start moving, I want to go straight from idle into walk. So what this timeline is saying is whenever this condition, whenever speed is greater than 0.01, whenever our character's speed is greater than 0.01, then it's going to wait till it plays this whole little animation of idle, and then it's going to transition into walk. That's not what we want. So we have to adjust when our transition fades into walk. So to do that, we're going to adjust our little uh, arrows here. And you'll notice how our transition from idle into walk happens immediately. We also want to uncheck exit time. We don't want an exit time on this idle animation. We want to go straight into walk. And let's do the same thing for our transition back into idle. We want to do them for both transitions right here. So I'm going to bring my arrow here. And you don't want to go all the way here because you want to give it a little bit of a transition right there. You want to uncheck has exit time. And if I press play, let's see what happens now. All right, so if I stop, there's a little bit of a lag between going back to idle. So why don't we check that? Why don't we fix that? So I'm going to make that transition time real small. And same thing for idle. Let's make that little transition fade in, fade out time smaller. There we go. So I'm going to maximize this and we can get really see what Gambit's doing here. He's walking. He stops. He walks to the left. It flips. He stops. So that little bit of fade time we saw on our transitions here, kind of this little bit of uh, let me zoom in with the mouse wheel here. This little bit of a transition overlap right here kind of gives us that little animation where he settles into a standing uh, standstill idle stance. All right, so with movement now complete, we can now start focusing on attacks and taking damage. So just to review a little bit on what we did. First, with this line, this little section of code, we got our character just flat out moving. This is the same kind of code we use to get our spaceship moving in past assignments. All right, this conditional check here, Check to see which direction we were moving. So if we were moving less than zero, that means we were moving in a negative value or towards the left. And then we did a check and see, are we facing right or not? All right. So if we're moving left and we're not facing right, then we need to flip the character. All right. Else if, if we're moving to the right and we're, not, we're facing right, we need to flip as well. So that little bit of logic here calls this void flip function, which takes care of our Boolean flag that we're checking right here in this conditional statement. We're getting a temporary vector three value right here. We're flipping that temporary vector three value in the X scale. So it effectively gives everything on the horizontal plane a scale of negative one. And then we're updating our local scale on our game object with this modified this scale value, which sets our game object scale to negative one or the opposite of what we were in, what the opposite scale of what we were facing. That's a little bit of a uh, hard to wrap your head around, but kind of go through it a few times, walk through the logic and you might be, you can probably get it. Um, then we use this line of code here to access our speed float parameter in our animation window. So these parameters are the actual values we can adjust and get at in our code. And these nodes right here are the animations that we can transition in between if we make conditions in these little transition paths. Okay. So anytime we want to go to idle to walk, the game looks at this transition path. It checks the condition of speed greater than 0.01. So it looks at this parameter right here. And in our code, we're constantly updating our speed parameter right here to the square magnitude of the velocity of our character. So if our character's moving, our speed value gets updated, which triggers this transition right here. Right here, this trigger triggers this transition 
condition here to transition into walk. And then if we stop moving, we see that speed is less than 0.01 and it transitions back into our idle phase. So that is a little taste of how we can use our animator window and codes and our scripts to get our character moving and looking pretty good here. All right. So if this is a little bit of hazy still for you, that's fine. We're going to be working in the animator window in our code in a few more videos, and you're going to get a taste of how to more easily and more comfortably work between our animator window, our parameters, our transitions, the conditions within our transitions here, and how we all tie it up with lines of code in our controller script. So in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how we can access or see which animation state we're currently in. That'll be a pretty useful tool, right? If we want to be able to know what state, if we're walking or if we're idle, we're going to want to be able to know that inside of our code. So we're going to create a state machine method of programming in which we can check whatever animation state we are in inside of our whole animator window. So that's what we're going to talk about in our next chapter. And after that, we're going to add functionality with attacks. We're going to add functionality on taking damage. And I'm going to give you your little challenge of the, of the uh, lesson, and that is creating a projectile attack. By then, you guys should be able to handle creating your own little projectile function. So until then, we're just going to take it easy. We're going to do this, tackle this one step at a time. A lot of information here. But ultimately, you're going to have a really cool character that's walking around. And in fact, I'm going to give you a preview of what you're going to see by the end of these chapters. So I'm going to maximize this on play. And here I have Gambit. I'm walking to the left, to the right. I hold down my left click. I get attacks going. I'll press right trigger. He throws his card. And notice, I, if I'm moving and attack, I stop moving. Same thing with throw the card. If I hold down the middle mouse button, I can block. And for right now, I, if I press Q, I can QA damage animation. And if I press E, I can knock my character down. And that's what we're going to tackle in the next few chapters. I mean, that is pretty much a beat -em up controlling a beat-em-up character right there, right? Moving around, throwing cards, doing damage, taking damage, getting knocked down, getting up again. All right, guys. So I'll see you in the next video.